Please all stand for the Angelus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners. Now, now and at the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be done to be according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners. sinners. Now, now at the, the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For for to beseech you, Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord, amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning. Welcome to the Shrine of St. John Bosco the Dreamer. Together with our personal intentions, we also include the following. For the gift of life and birthday intentions of Sister Isabel Aluntaga, Nico, Russell Rex, Lance, Aaron Lois, Romel Juntiveros, Bien, Shane Patrick Mendoza, Dre Rafael Nickdao, Justin Ventura, Court Adrian Tumimbang, A.J. Sahorga, Carl Julie, Kyla Julie. Thanksgiving for all the blessings received, offered by Albarakin family. Thanksgiving Mass in honor of Senor San Roque for all the answered prayer. Thanksgiving Mass for the gift of life of Jansen Flynn Sanoy for all the graces received and for the good health to our family and all, offered by Sanoy and Cardanio family. For the healing, recovery, and good health of Manalo Miguel Valenzuela, Emelda Dulente, for the intentions of Jan Gotardo, Vince Joseph, Joseph Kyle Angelo, Dexter Patrimonio, Eugene Carungian, Elmer Miguelita, Elmer and Miguelita, Ronel and April Grace, Christian, Angelica, Anselma, Seiji Karandang and Masi, Kadungan family, Dr. Wilson de la Calzada and family, Brian, work and family intentions of Dennis and Teresa Apuhin and family, for the eternal repose of the souls of Jerry Abinido, Alberta Baraka, Josefina, Hermogenes de Luca, Delia Minuza, Elsa Adiva, Josephine Flores, Lidivina, Midelina Rudes, Faustina Cortez, Pantillon Cortez Sr., Carmen Clabasilias, Farvin Alfred, Rolando Cadungun, Dario, Blas, Natividad, Patricio, Pasc, Carolina, Benjamin, Eleanor, Teresita, Fulgencio, Mercedes, Morilu, Rolando, Elisu, Tor Torili, Abner Quiver, Anatasia Canoy, Marcelo Canoy, Magdalena Afechi, Angelito Canoy, Nestor Canoy, Luder Fader, Rini Fader, Florencio Fader, Baby Averi Fader, Alejandro, Pilagia, Herberto Sr., Romeo, Mario Manatad Sr., Consolacion Arinday, George Rio Fascio, J. Rio Fascio, Dona Maria Apuhin, Danilo Apuhin, Gilbert Arunday, 
Susana Ledesma, Trinidad Arinday, Glenda Ledesma, Serta Sandrino, and Cecilia Panaligan. And for the eternal repose of the souls in purgatory, especially those who died from COVID-19. Please all stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with and your all. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity 
with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches, for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people whom I formed for myself that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of Zion, we were like men dreaming, then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with rejoicing, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us, we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing carry the sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. 
us, we are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it since I have been indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please all stand. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning, he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to him, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. 
So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today's gospel narrative on the encounter of Jesus and a woman is something that touches many parts of our spiritual life. Sin, judgment, and mercy. In this season of Lent, we are all called to a life of going back to God and turning away from our sin. But before we could turn away from our sins, we are asked to acknowledge, to accept, and admit that we have offended the Lord, ourselves, and our brothers and sisters. A repentant person is a humble person since he or she learns to look into oneself and wills to change oneself little by little with one's effort and with God's grace. At the beginning of today's gospel, the people saw the sin of a woman. She was caught committing the sin of adultery. And from sin, there is a movement towards judgment. People saw the sin that this woman did, and then they judged what should be done to her that they even said to jesus in the law moses commanded us to stone such women the people were convinced that their judgment on the sin that the woman committed was correct since they mentioned someone in authority from the old testament moses himself they were sure that Jesus will also judge her as they judged. But our Lord gave a different response. Silence. And in that deafening silence, a dramatic move by our Lord was done. He bent down and he began to write on the ground with his finger. This gesture done by Jesus has engaged the imagination of many biblical scholars. No one can tell with precision what the gesture means, but every insight enables us to peer into the mystery. Is not the dust of the earth our common humble origin? It was as if our Lord Jesus through the gesture of writing on the dust, on the ground with his finger, reminding the people then, especially those who accuse the woman, of what they are made up of, dust of the earth. Yet since they did not understand what Jesus was doing, they persisted to ask him. So our Lord responded to them saying, Let the one among you who is without sin, be the first to throw a stone at her. This statement from our Lord led the people not towards the woman, but towards themselves. Jesus is asking them to look into themselves if they have not sinned in order for them to have the privilege of throwing the stone at the woman. And afterwards, the Lord kept silent, bent down, and wrote again on the ground. And that moment of silence gave the people time to turn towards themselves. Thus, they went away 
one by one, beginning with the elders. Why did they start to leave? It could be that they have realized that they themselves are sinners and not worthy enough to throw the stone at the woman whom they have caught in the act of adultery. In the end, Jesus and the woman were left in the scene that he asked her, Where are they, the people who have brought you here? And at that point, the woman was slowly made to understand by Jesus the extent of her sin, but also the depth of God's mercy. Her sin has led the people to look into themselves, recognize their own sinfulness, and did not anymore judge her. Jesus then expressed his words of mercy to her. Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. After making her realize her sin, led others to self-reflection, Jesus forgave her and reminded her not to sin anymore, not, not to commit the same sin again. Brothers and sisters, it is very beautiful to recount this story and reflect on it. Perhaps it may be a good idea to ask ourselves, do we ever find ourselves guilty of stoning others? Maybe not actual physical stoning, but nowadays online stoning. Today, we don't need to drag a person physically to a public square to condemn that person. We only need to post or tweet to bash a person. Public shaming has never been so easy nowadays. And if we are not careful, we might just end up joining the bandwagon and engage in online stoning. When we engage in online bashing, we not only only hurt others, but we also hurt their families and their reputation. Today, the Lord reminds us to stop and think twice and even more before we cast our first stone. And let this gospel today lead us on to reflect about sin, judgment, and God's mercy. In this time of Lent, the Lord continues to invite us to come back to Him, to experience His mercy and forgiveness, and that by being forgiven ourselves, we too become forgiving and merciful towards others, not judge, but help and guide our brothers and sisters back to God. Let this be our prayer today. Lord Jesus, as you have showed us mercy because we are dust, may we also be compassionate to one another because of this common, humble origin. Amen. Let us all stand and profess our faith in our loving and merciful God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in Lord Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Encouraged by Jesus' merciful attitude toward the sinful woman, let us present our petitions to him for our own needs and the needs of all mankind. Let us say together, Merciful Lord, hear us. Merciful Lord, hear us. For the church and her leaders, while firmly upholding the moral principles, may they show compassion toward those who fail to live up to those principles. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. For all those who struggle to live an upright moral life, May they succeed in overcoming external temptations and their personal moral weakness with the help of God's grace and the support of the Christian community. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. For those who have been victims of human passions, may they find in God's mercy and in our compassion the strength they need to rebuild their lives. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, Hear us. For the families and communities victimized by war, may mutual respect, appreciation, and solidarity enable them to rebuild their lives in harmony and peace. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. For all political candidates who are running for public office, may they be really determined to serve the country rather than their own interests or those of their party and friends. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear us. Oratio Imperata against COVID-19. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people task to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for all afflicted. May they be restored to health Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection. O Holy Mother of God, do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. 
O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Keep us under your protection, Lord, and guide us along the way of compassion and mercy toward our neighbor, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Oh, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out in them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, 
they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the help of Christians, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter, should enter under, my under my roof, but only, but only say, say the word, the word that my soul, soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Spiritual communion. O Jesus, I turn toward the holy tabernacle where you live hidden for love of me. I love you, O my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come nevertheless and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, render it like unto your own. Amen.
can the world ever satisfy the emptiness in our hearts in pain? We deny in Him alone is our Let us pray. 
We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Next Sunday is already the, the beginning of the Holy Week with the celebration of our Lord's Passion, Palm Sunday. We invite you to bring with you your palms to be blessed on that day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.